Welcome back to Bow News Network. Uh, we're actually taking a closer look here at the weather across the continental United States. Uh, and uh, we're actually taking a closer look going into the month of June. And as you all know that um, going into the month of June is going to be the start of the hurricane season, June 1st through November. So we are seeing some pretty heavy weather all across the country uh, getting started. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, we stay in touch with all of our subscribers as we go into um, the next phase of um, going into the summer and the severe weather uh, that's uh, um, pretty much um, um, typical for weather here uh, going into June through November. So let's take a closer look at our weather across the continental United States. Uh, we can actually see some severe thunderstorm activity in the region of central Texas as well as Oklahoma uh, for today, Sunday, uh, May 31st. We do have some showers off off the coast of um, Southeast Florida, we anticipate, um, based on our, um, based on the model for um, marginal weather, that there's going to be additional um, intensity as far as weather is concerned for Southwest Florida. But if we actually take a closer look at uh, what's actually happening for the continental United States, uh, we can actually see um, that there's going to be a low pressure system in the region of. Um, um, in uh, of just north um, of tech, uh, Mexico, uh, we do have a low pressure system that's anchored pretty much on the four corners uh, near um, the border of uh, New Mexico, um, Colorado, um, Utah, as well as Nevada, and we're seeing quite a bit of um, storms um, on the border of um, uh, uh, south eastern New Mexico, severe storms, storms in the, in the region of Roswell, Las Cruces, and also um, truth and consequences. Um, there's a, quite a bit of storm activity in that region, but we anticipate that will be transitioning more into the region of um, central Texas going into, um, going into uh, the next 24 hours. Uh, if we take a closer look at some of the storm activity in the region, uh, we can actually see that um, it was pretty severe storm activity um, in the region of uh, central New Mexico with hail reports um, coming in from several several spotters in the region. Um, we can also see that there was also severe weather in the region of Midland, uh, Odessa, as well as uh, San Angelo, um, starting uh, going into um, the midday of Sunday and the Sunday afternoon. Um, this area has been completely saturated with quite a bit of severe weather in the region. You can see there is a flood flood advisors in the region of La Mesa as well as Snyder, Texas and Albany, Texas. Flash flood warnings also there. But the region of Abilene, Texas, San Angelo, Texas, um, that area of Fort Davis has received quite a bit of severe weather and you can actually see it, it's actually on the border of New Mexico and Texas and even in the region of New Mexico there's severe um, uh, flash flood um, advisories in that region um, Artesia, Roswell, um, um, Alamogordio uh, have all received severe um, uh, weather in that region but we can actually take a closer look at what's actually happening with the weather in the region. Uh, we see that low pressure system anchored pretty well right above um, at the four corners. And we do see a high pressure system in the southeast that's kind of warming things up in the region of the North Carolina, South Carolina region. Um, temperatures are above average in the south. Uh, if we take a closer look at some of the temperatures in the region, uh, we can actually see that in, uh, if we start with uh, Southern California, looking at um, temperatures in the mid 90s, um, quite a bit of um, dry air and high temperatures in the region of South Florida, Southwest Florida, mid 90s, um, 80 degrees for uh, Atlanta. Uh, we're looking at uh, for the region of Northern California uh, in the mid 90s. But um, also, we're also taking a closer look at uh, what's actually happening in the south, in the northeast, uh, with temperatures um, in the in the mid 70s to upper 80s. So, as far as the southeast is concerned, we can see that there's quite a bit of 
um, temperature anomalies um, in the region of the southeast, sort of like a heat dome that we had mentioned. And we anticipate based on um, everything that's going to be happening, uh, we can actually see that severe weather has been transitioning in the region of Texas also. So we anticipate that uh, going into uh, tomorrow, uh, we see more severe weather in um, along the border of um, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. And if we actually take a closer look at uh, some of the cells that we actually saw um, in the region of New Mexico, this will be a telltale sign of what should be expected in the region of central Texas and also uh, going into southern Oklahoma. Uh, we There was actually a tornado advisory um, in the region um, just uh, south of Socorro, uh, New Mexico, um, earlier today, and we can actually see that um, uh, severe weather pattern transitioning um, with uh, this system as it moves its way across um, from the border of uh, southeast New Mexico into Texas. But as far as that low pressure system making its way across, that is just going to be a um, pretty, uh, that's going to uh, the severe weather along the Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana border is pretty much predicated by the movement of that low pressure system as it trans, uh, trans uh, uh, as it transitions into the Great Plains states. So we anticipate that there's going to be more severe weather to come. Um, we can see some of the temperatures in the region um, is in the mid 60s, uh, uh, um, upper 70s in the region very very high dew points very saturated region of um, in uh, for along the border anything um, that's going to be east of the i-35 corridor in texas uh, should anticipate severe weather possibly even tornado risk in the region um, as far as the uh, as far as the storm prediction center is concerned uh, we do have ha anticipate that um, for we do anticipate that for um, for marginal threat for the region of Dallas, Texas, as well as um, Fort Worth, Texas, um, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Arlington, Texas, Plano, Texas, and we do see an elevated risk for the regions of Midland, Texas, Odessa, Texas, San Angelo, Texas, Roswell, New Mexico, as well as Del Rio, Texas. Um, as far as tomorrow is concerned, uh, we can actually see that uh, what we anticipate will be uh, um, persistent pre uh, precipitation in the region of Abilene and Lubbock, Texas. Um, quite a bit of moisture is going to be moving across the terrain in from central New Mexico all the way through central Texas. And we also see that there's going to be strong enough heating and ample um, Cape energy um, convective available potential energy in the region to actually initiate quite a bit of heavy storm activity uh, for the region of uh, Midland, Texas, Odessa, Texas, Abilene uh, going in tomorrow. This is just some of the uh, graphics for, uh, for from the radar for what we, we experienced um, here uh, for uh, the holiday weekend and we anticipate there'll be more severe threat for that region actually going in um, for tomorrow. We anticipate a marginal threat for the regions of Laredo, Texas, Little Rock, Arkansas, as well as Waco, Texas uh, for tomorrow. Um, so we do anticipate that for Tuesday, June 1st, it's going to be pretty heavy weather. Also, we also anticipate based on the um, based on the modeling that there's going to be severe thunderstorm activity um, along the regions for um, southwest Florida, regions such as Fort Myers, Tampa, Tampa, uh, St. Petersburg, um, all the way down to uh, south southwest Florida, and even southeast Florida, should anticipate increased shower activity going into June 1st. Um, also, um, when we take a closer look, uh, there will be a trough in the region of the Great Lakes. So we anticipate that that will be additional um, uh, rainfall for that region. Also, if we take a closer look also at some of the temperatures again, um, keep in mind that um, there is such uh, there is a cooling trend in uh, states such as um, Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana, and that will continue to persist while the so southeast is going to deal with more severe 
dry weather as far as elevated temperatures all the way down into South Florida and we see the same dry heat spell also in the region of California um, but as that low pressure system actually transitions into the area of central Texas more into the Plain states um, residents of Arkansas Louisiana even Missouri and um, uh, West Mississippi can anticipate increased shower activity going into the midweek heavy rainfall anticipated possibly for uh, the lower Mississippi Valley as well as northern Alabama Georgia and also the Carolinas and uh, also uh, we should keep in mind that um, going into uh, the midweek that um, uh, based on our, our, our model here that um, there will still be a cooling off trend for um, residents in Colorado, Wyoming, and also Nebraska, but more turbulent weather for the region, uh, for residents in the region of um, uh, Oklahoma, uh, north, um, north, cent no, northeast, um, cent uh, Texas, as well as um, Arkansas, northern Louisiana. But uh, we will continue to monitor the situation here at the Weather Center and we will bring that information to you as soon as possible in regards to additional rainfall that's going to be uh, in the region of um, uh, going to be uh, along the Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas border. So by all means, I hope that this uh, weather update has um, has brought you a lot of great information please share it like and share and subscribe to our channel and as always um, always remember to bow to the weather and have a great day